babli boo. Are you interested in the finer things of life? The things requiring stemmed glasses and chuckled exhorts of contemplation. <clears throat> <clears throat> Not quite. <laughs> well, this podcast isn't for you, but we do have well, at least one of those things. Welcome to the Whiskey House po- Pub House, where we will be trying a assortment of different whiskeys tonight. Um, Dylan will be leading us in this, and he is among us as always. He's our head. I'm here. He's here. And usually, as always, we have our friend Carter here as well. Hello. I'm Zach. Let's get this party started. In here. <laughs> Keep running, running, and, and running, 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 and running, 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 and running, running. So, you know, this is coming right off the heels of another episode or another recording we do. Yeah. So we don't, nothing's changed since last time. Mm-hmm. Um, but in this case. But Dylan didn't get his milkshake. Yeah, we, we got some, <laughs> we got some dinner in between. And I'm just going to bring it up because I feel us, bad. Some of us got dinner. Yep. Some, some of us got parts of dinner. <laughs> I feel bad. I didn't get you what you wanted. <laughs> but fine. in true Zach fashion, I must say, well, should we just jump right into it and get started? I think so. Okay. Would you like so, me to do the pouring? If you would like to. I don't mind. Be... I'm closer okay. to the pouring. Yeah. My glass is up there still. Yeah, sounds good. Are we okay. doing the... Keeper's heart. Yep, the first All right, one. you yep. introduce that. <laughs> it All works right. perfect for my glass. <laughs> so, <clears throat> some of you might have heard of this. We have a new distillery that has recently opened up in the central Minneapolis suburb area known as O'Shaughnessy's Distillery. And they are making such whiskeys as Keeper's Heart. And now... As of yesterday, essentially, at the time of recording, the Keeper's Heart 10-year single malt scotch whiskey, or Irish whiskey? Yes. Finished in some sort of wine. We have not had that. We don't have that one. It was just released yesterday, but thought I'd throw that in as a little bit of a information. Uh, Zach, can you bring the bottle down, too, with us? If possible. Zach is also returning as poor boy. Poor today. boy. Oh, look at that. So nice. Mm, keeper's heart. So we kind of alluded to something um, last episode when we were talking about the rye that you brought, the Wild Turkey 101, uh, and a certain uh, taste tasting experience that we had. And the context behind that is the three of us did a tour at the O'Shaughnessy's Distillery about a month ago to just kind of see what was going on. Mm-hmm. You know, what, we just, what were we getting? Yeah, we really liked that they had the ex-Jameson, you know, master dist- or head distiller. Yep. So, I mean, that's just huge news for a, a Minneapolis distillery. Brian I mean, something. Just, Brian yeah, don't even, don't even remember his name. Masters? Yeah. That'd be a sweet last name. You're a master distiller, and your name is Brian Masters. It's awesome. He's got a sweet last name no yeah. matter what. Yep. Yeah. He's got a sweet collection, too. Johnny Irish. We, we saw on the tour he has a little personal locked cabinet full of some pretty decent, I guess, whiskey. <laughs> Early, uh, it's pretty baller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Yep. So um, um, so we did the tour. Yep. So it was we'll, very interesting. Let's kind of touch base with it. Um, yeah. They have three... Giant uh, pot stills. Yep, and a and some columns from Vendome, I believe, and then some other miscellaneous ones, but some small ones for experimenting. But it's kind of cool. They at that time they had not gotten to run anything through the still yet, but uh, yeah. we did the tour. It's very cool. It's right next to Surly, so if you know that, not wait, yeah. So if you know where that is, Hi. go check that out. His name is Brian Nation. Nation. Brian Nation. Okay. Master Nation. I think, think, yeah. So, yeah, he was the former distiller at Jameson and was brought over to be put in charge of this distillery. Yep. I would have have loved to ask him, like, what was the paycheck they offered him? Like, why would you leave to do this, you know? And, I mean, because he doesn't say. He says it's for, because, you know, it's it's an interesting idea. He likes these co-founders that he's working with, with, mm-hmm. you know, the O'Shaughnessy people. 
But to leave that. But to leave where he's wet, where he was at. To come to, to start. In my opinion, it's got to. It's money. It's it's bank. I mean, he must be. I, I would bank I would assume right so, now. but I also I also do think it probably be like I mean think about. I mean the shoes, the shoes that he was in at, um, Middleton. Middleton. Oh, Middleton. Yep. yep. So I mean, there's. There is a very set way of doing things, I would assume. Mm -hmm. You know, tradition. This is a product that has been around for hundreds of years. This is, you know, the way we do it. Yeah. Um, Obviously, there's, we know there's room for um, experiment, but that's kind of its own thing, the um, experimental line of Middleton. But I don't know. I I think part of it is definitely... Your paycheck, but also probably also Just has the, to do the with opportunity. The to opportunity. Do what you want. Yep. So, so yeah, it's an Irish style <clears throat> whiskey that we have before us. The Keeper's Heart. It says Irish and American whiskey, with an E. Yep. They use the three way. three different, tech, I guess you know, malts in this whiskeys because it's one. Yes. It's one. It's it's sourced <laughs> American whiskey. Right, and then it's one. A rye, it's a rye. Yep, a yeah, specific it's specifically rye. a rye. One Irish um, grain Irish whiskey. Irish grain, yep. And one Irish... Um, Barley? Pot still. A oh, single pot, pot still. Single pot. So, assuming that the Irish portion of it is probably from Middleton, that would make the most sense. Mm-hmm. The rye is from an unknown source. We asked, but... They wouldn't tell us. They said Secrets. south. Yeah. And uh, if you listen to the last episode. We thought it was wild turkey. Could be. Maybe. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. So we had tried this before. We actually got to try the three initial parts that went into this blend um, at the distillery on the tour. And that was really cool. Mm-hmm. So we tried the rice separately. We tried mm-hmm. the single pot still separate and the grain, st- um, the grain whiskey separately. So... We got to think what we thought, and the pot still was amazing. Yep. So we're pretty excited for their future, especially the the one they just came out with, the ten year with the finish, and just whatever they're going to make in the in the future. You know, I mean, they have some amazing prospects. They do for a, a Minneapolis mm-hmm. local they have, place. They have that, <clears throat> and they also have. Uh, <clears throat> I know they released a vodka. A vodka. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't remember. I think it was Watch Watchtower Vodka or Witch Tower Vodka or something like that. Mm. Watch ta ta ta. Well, pa pa pa. So shall we do some tasting notes, smelling yep. notes, or do you want to read what the label says no, about it? There's there's yeah. nothing on it. It's just it's a new distillery, mm-hmm. brand new. This is not their own product they had made. This is all source. Yeah, we know that. Forty three percent alcohol. And it's priced around thirty five dollars. So it's those not, are the context. Yeah, not too bad for yep. that's for seven fifty. So I mean, most Irish whiskeys are forty to yeah. sixty. So not bad. Nice orangey nose. It smells like high west. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it totally does. It smells very creamy. Orange dreamsicle. Orange cre- creamsicle. Yeah. What's it? What's it? A dreamsicle. Same thing. It's, it's just a different oh, name. Different name. This smells like an orange and vanilla cream mm-hmm. popsicle. Orange thing. dreamsicle. Yep. <laughs> Very nice. Tastes like it too. This is very syrupy. Very. uh it's got a good viscosity to it. Coming back from dinner, this tastes pretty good. Yeah. I when we um, were taste testing this, we all kind of acknowledged that kind of the, the best part about this was just the regular Irish pot still whiskey. You yeah. know, that was the, that was the best. Ingredient. That was the best thing yeah. of the three ingredients. And honestly, it might have just been better without. You know, I don't think it's subtracting any flavors, but what it added doesn't necessarily make it a better or made it. A better whiskey. Um, I think it's pretty good for the value, though. Honestly, this is I a- do. Well, I, yeah, especially when the context matters for for this. This is when we were talking. It's a little bit more pri- uh, expensive than like a regular Jameson, but I think that's kind of where it's priced Pat, accordingly. Yeah. So, and it, it is yeah, it's it doesn't have that weird metallic note that Jameson has. 
it's much more full bodied. Mm-hmm. It's got three percent higher ABV, but um, it's a good entry point for the distillery, and I think that's what they purposely did. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I'd be interested to try this in a highball. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think I think the cool thing is that with their cocktail lounge is that they don't they use I think a lot of their own of keeper's heart. And it's mm-hmm. not like you go into the cocktail lounge and they're like, Oh, you want this and then it's like they're just pulling stuff off the shelf. Mm-hmm. Like right. just random stuff that you would normally put in a drink. They're using their whiskey <clears throat> which might be good, might be bad. We haven't been there yet. So I just think it's kind of cool, mm-hmm. too. Yeah, overall, it's pretty, for a Minneapolis place, it's, it's spectacular, honestly. What, what comp- for a Minnesota whiskey. For a Minnesota yeah, whiskey, I mean, a solid, distillery. Yeah. I mean, because their, their opponents would be Far North, Spirits, Jay Carver, Jay Carver I mean, Rel- talking, yeah, for talking about Justice. Experience, I mean. Norseman. Yep. I think the Panther Blech. is... One of them, I think Pan is Panther the oldest. Panther might be the oldest. Panther one. is the oldest. I feel like that. I heard that one, but <sighs> but I, as far as it, uh, yeah, it's probably between Far North, Jay Carver, and these guys. Maybe, oh, Talisker probably too, but Talisker's moving away now. Talisker. Wait, Tattersall. Sorry, Tattersall. Tattersall. I always say that. Mm-hmm. I always say that. Yeah, Tattersall's moving away. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're just Sad. over the border. But it's not Minnesota. It's, not. it's Wisconsin. They've forsaken us. Um, the cocktail lounge will still be here. Yeah. whoop de doo <laughs> Lottie freaking da <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. It's good. Yep. It's good. Uh, score. Um, Four and a half. Yeah, I, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's fine. You know. I wouldn't. It's not super. Spe- there's nothing spectacular about it. Uh, the drink itself. It's just light. I give it a five. Syrupy. I'll, I'll bump it up. A on. little sweet. Yeah. I, li- I like it. Mm-hmm. it. It's average. A little bit. Average. Yeah. Which is pretty good for the very first whiskey out of this distillery. And I think that was also even if it's just a blend of other people. One of the first what three seven fives that they sold. You can only sell three seven fives in Minnesota at the distillery. at the distillery. Yeah, but that was like from their first run, I think, e- of their blendings. Maybe I'm not sure. I don't remember them saying anything about that, but Psh. I also wasn't paying the most Psh. attention. Right, I was more so just embracing just the cool. I, so- I loved how it smelled in there. The distillery liked, was amazing. Yeah, I mean, all the new hardware they have is so cool. So cool. Mm-hmm. All the vats and the the columns yeah, and like the, the pots. They're big and, fermenting vats. Yeah, but everything is just sparkling clean. It's just fresh stainless steel. You know, it's just it's so weird being in a basically a, a small factory that has barely been used. If you know, it hasn't really. Because they what when we were there just turned on the one of the pot stills, or was it no, they turned it on like the, the column, column stills? I think they they hadn't run the the pots yet. No, they they just ran the column still for the first run. Yeah, but we, we were like, they will be making bourbon. They said that, which would be sweet. Mm-hmm. They claim that they're the first ones to do pot solely pot still bourbon. Which, as far as my knowledge is, that is inaccurate because mm-hmm. we have Texas bourbons that do that. Don't make them angry at us. We don't want such them as, as a sponsor. Uh, such as um. I think um, Balconis and the Hickory, the Licorice Brothers, which is the, what was the heirloom corn Hidden cast rank that we had? Iron Root? Iron Root, Iron Root, yeah. Iron Root, I believe, does that too. So, But I might be but wrong. that's Texas, though. It's not even part of America. They don't even want to be part of America. Lone so. Star State. Yeah, yep. Lone Star State. So yep. they're not, they don't really count. They don't count. Speaking of counting, number two? Number dose. Let's do it. Number two is a true Irish whiskey. Single malt. Let's see, I see. I like their bottle. Is the is the the cap class? 
Yes. Oh, see, I like that it's got that. Oh, we got to get a cork pop. That's a brand new bottle. We got to do a cork pop. I think. I really like that bottle. Oh, my gosh. Ooh. Oh. That's a hard seal. Is it all glass? Yeah, is it? all glass. <laughs> the cork is glass? Yeah. That's it's just a rubber seal. Kind of scary, actually. That's pretty sweet. I kind of want to buy a bottle just to have one. Because they're kind of... That's pretty unique. So, context on this one. This is Waterford. Specifically, the Dunmore edition 1.1. 1. 1. So does the 1.1, that's just the edition name, right? That of has, the Dunmore, yes. And that has nothing to do with any... I guess that doesn't... It's an edition number. It's an edition yep. number. So it's... Um, thank you. Thank you. This is 50% alcohol. Okay. And this, Ooh. so Waterford, do you guys remember we had a conversation on the podcast about uh, Trey, Trey, Trey Va, Trey Wa, Trey Wa, Trey Va, Trey Va. What's the Trey Bon? No, the, yeah, yeah, Trey Bon. Um, Tarawa, Tarawa, Tarawa. I don't, I don't remember this. Oh, remind me of this discussion. Is that when we were like that word came up and we yeah. didn't know what it was? It's a French word. Oh, and I we looked it up. It's on the bottle. I think it's terroir, but it's um, the meaning behind that is localized, like localized vegetations. Um, the differences oh. between them, yeah, and stuff. So this is. All the grain is from one farm. Really? Yes. Is that specifically from this? This man's uh, farm. Well, no, I mean, is that from the, what was it called again? The Dun? The Dunmore? Yeah. Was, is that specifically for Dunmore or does Waterford I, I believe so. I believe only... that's just the name of the edition and they have different ones. They have the location of the farm. They have the farmer's name, I oh, believe, wow. on there. And Zach is looking up some of this information. But this is edition 1.1 of this, uh, that specific farm. So the idea is you can essentially follow along. And as the different releases um, happen, you can see the changes of the the grain, essentially. Interesting. And so that, is this their only release? Or no, do they have, they have quite a few. Okay. And it's only with this one that they do the one singular farm. No, I think it's all of them. Oh, it's all of them? Yeah. Very interesting. So you can, each one comes with a code on the back that tells you all the details of the contents of your bottle. Oh, wow. So this one, the grower is John Tynan in the, on the Dunmore Farm, edition 1.1. 1. 1. So I don't know if that means it's the first or it's the second. Yeah. Harvested. August 17th, 2015, distilled, week 27, 2016. So that's like halfway, that's like halfway through the year. It's probably July. It's probably the first, first couple weeks of July. Maturation, three years, 11 months, 17 days. So almost four years. 50% ABV, they made 13,000 of these bottles for the United States. Wow. So this is um, 35% ex-bourbon, uh, 25% French oak, and 20% new oak, and 20% VDN, uh, Vin Dox Natural, a sweet wine dessert from France. Uh, the casks were filled at approximately 72% ABV, and the release is bottled at 70 like we have been told. Here are some of the observations from the head distiller. Uh, the nose, malty, yep. ra- raisins, orange chocolate, black peppercorns, citrus fruits, red currants, like eating a light cinnamon porridge while sitting in a worn leather chair. I'll be the judge of that. Yeah. That's, the, that's just the nose. That's not even the smell. Or that's not even the taste. Yeah. 
I like his description yep. of it. Yeah, the, the, the nose smells like you're eating something. Yeah. So, I don't know what that means. I, did, I definitely get, like, you know, it's, it is malty. Yeah. It's young. Um, yep, orange chocolate. Totally get that. Black peppercorns, not so much. Eh, a little bit. A little bit. I get that. <sighs> cool. Cool. All, All right. right, the taste. Go for Do the you want to taste it first before you know? Yeah, I'll taste yeah. it first. Yeah. Mm. That's pretty good. Yeah. I think the finish is a little different than what the the start and the middle kind of expect you to, you know. It gets kind of weird tasting at the end. We'll do it again. Hmm. Yeah, because the it's really watery a little bit at the fur at the beginning, it's silky, you know, and then the fruits kind of come in in the middle, they kick up. There's a malty caramel. Yeah, the malty caramel, a little sweetness, and then it kind of melts into just like a generic sweetness, you yeah. know, at the end. This is nice. It definitely has its complexities. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'll read you the tastes. I can't disagree with them, but spice rack bomb, green apple, okay, marzipan, lemon sherbet, licorice, grapefruit, dark chili chocolate, popping candy, like pop rocks. I guess popping candy. I don't know if that's a adjective or a verb, like popping, like you're popping a candy in your mouth, or if popping candy is a, a you know, a, a Irish, right. yeah. an Irish thing. Because I don't get, I don't know, I don't get the lemon sherbet. I don't really get a whole lot of lemon. It's a generic citrusiness, you know, and I get that. But lemon in particular, I'm gonna say no. Also, the spice rack. I don't know about that. It's spicy, but and then yeah, green apple. I don't know if it's a spice oh, rack. It's bomb. I think I... you know. Of course, you read these and you kind of so you're, you're seeking the flavors out and you're like, okay, yeah. I guess yeah, it's there. But n very few of these would I say I would pick out without knowing them or looking for them. The finish is a warm clove that tingles on your tongue and then becomes mouth-watering. Which, in that mouth-watering, it kind of makes you want some more. It makes you a little thirsty. I get that. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. It's... I enjoy it, but it's not... It's not really what I, I'm looking for in an Irish. Yeah. No. I don't find this super... I was talking about this last episode about the barrel, how it was satisfying. I'm not very satisfied with this. No. It I'm doesn't, not, it's yeah. missing something. It's not... If I, if I, if I started out a night with this, I'm going to switch to something else to finish it out. Yeah. This just kind of leaves you wanting. Because it's good enough to make you wish you had the finish of something better. So in that way, they're doing a good job. I think that's what it's missing is it's it's the body is missing the finish. Yeah, it doesn't have a any doubt. notable finish. Yeah, it just kind of melts away, fades away. Yeah. It's delicate. No, it is. It and the and the mid palate is good, but it just kind of leaves with some hotness from the flavor spice, but also the alcohol. Mm -hmm. But it, there's no flavor like body to it. Yeah, no change or no drastic change in, yeah. in the flavor for the finish. Yeah. So, all right. Well, it's, I love that code thing they do. It's cool. You can really yeah. dig deep, you know. And then, like, they were talking about the soil that they grow oh, those, yes. those grains in, you know, how deep they, they lay the yep. seeds, how, what's the water composition usually of that kind of agriculture. Stuff like that, you know, cool it, detailed stuff. Because they're getting into the detail on some, like some, um, 
some of these the wine producers and stuff, they're getting, uh, the Waterford is starting to, or just whiskey in general. Some whiskey manufacturers are starting to get into the detail of specifically the the barley and stuff. Yeah. The what makes the whiskey and not just looking at it from a manufacturing process, but pre-manufacturing where how much rainfall did it get where was it from well the soil composition you know the the time of year mm-hmm. so and they're starting to look at it and it, it's very interesting and nice to be able to compare to like areas um and hypothetically do the same procedure to it and mm-hmm. have them come out and compare the two so mm-hmm. yeah i just wish you could like with anything in all the liquor markets, you know, you can't just like select the ones you want to have, you know, you got to see what your local area provides. Yeah. And so you just, with all of this setup that they're allowing us to do, like, I would love to try this difference and this difference scientifically, right. you know, and yet you're never going to be able to do that. You yeah. know, the detail is lost on the drinker because there's no reason to compare when you can really only find a, the varying maybe I mean, maybe you'll happen to get the ones you'd, you'd want to compare right but the ones that you're going to but compare, yeah you're never gonna be able to find all of them yeah no yeah and that's just <clears throat> liquor you know that's how it works i you think can't, a, you can't get everything as a consumer that's very interesting yeah if you like to delve a little bit deeper into that yeah it, i mean it's like yeah it's it's um it's like what watching your favorite movie and then realizing there's you know, like a a deeper meaning, a, a three it. story series and a novel that goes mm-hmm. along with it, or something too. It's like you can try the whiskey, enjoy it, and then pick that, a, pick apart that, but then you can go deeper in and then find out like, oh, this is the history of this farm. This is the the soil composition. Mm-hmm. It's it's very in depth, mm-hmm. and it invites exploration. Yep. So it's so a good job, Waterford, on that. I like I love that detail. What will we rate it? This is really I'm gonna say a five and a half. Five and a half. I'm gonna give it a four. Oh really? I'm gonna yeah, four. Because I I like the keeper's heart more than that. Yeah, well, just I did a little. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I that's I guess that's why I didn't like the keeper's heart As more. much, yeah. I love their presentation. I love mm-hmm. the complete glass. I think that's super unique yeah. and super mm-hmm. cool. I was just love a to little try worried f- that it's yeah. gonna break. The wine finished one. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to. Which do that. that was that was partly finished, twenty percent. But yep. I would I would like something um, like a sherry, something stronger, yeah, a, like a desserty wine, yep. something like something that's got body to it, yep. a, f- a finished cask. But yeah, so and it it, it is unfortunately expensive, uh, about eighty dollars. So yeah, I yep. mean it is it's a cool collector's piece. It's full glass, to be honest. Mm-hmm. So let's continue on. Number three, are we are we still in the Irish zone? Or are we no, switching we're, we're going back to changing cars. <laughs> we're changing buses. Yeah, got off on the Irish train, and now we're flying from Dublin to Chicago. Chicago. All right, back to the U.S. Back in the U.S. Back in the U.S. Back in the USSR. <laughs> that was the monkeys. That was the monkeys. <laughs> that was the monkeys. Uh, I'm mega so I, mad. I, I think I had, I don't know if I said this on the podcast, but I'm pretty sure I've said a few times that I would never buy a Basil Hayden's ever again. You have, I think, more than once. There too. Yeah. And um, I broke that promise. Ooh. That was pitchy. So we have today before us the Basil Hayden's Toasted Barrel. The ever trendy trend for bourbon right now is to just have your regular bourbon and then toast it and release that. So it's only, to my knowledge, really made a difference to Woodford Double Oak, and I love that. The 1910 is similar but different in ways. Yeah. That's pretty good. Elijah Craig. The Elijah Craig toast barrel, everyone. Not good. Yeah, that's um mo- about seventy percent say it's not good. And then there's like a thirty percent split. Let's say it's like 
freaking fantastic. We only know one person that likes it. Do we know a, p- a person actually? Yeah. Who? Is it Nick Griffin? No, Griffin hated it. <laughs> okay, it was Nick. Ah, Nick just liked it because I gave him a free bottle. Okay, it was Nick. Okay, it was Nick. It was Nick. But they changed the branding on all of their Basil Hayden's now. Yeah, they look. I miss the, the coat that they have on the old ones. It well, just it's, never. It's missing the coat. Yeah. They it, still have the belt. Yeah, the belt. But there's no there's no maxi shoulders to go with it. No. Or power power, power shoulders. shoulders. Power shoulders. So this is only 40%. Didn't realize it was All like Basil proof. Hayden's are 40%. That's why it was part of the reason I would never buy Basil yeah. Hayden's again, because they're expensive and they're 40%. Yeah. So, um, Zach, look at the flavor note, the notes on there. And um, I said before the podcast, this just makes me mad because it's so stupid. But um, they are the simplest yep. notes ever yep. conceived. Um, let's just have Carter taste it, and then he's going to give us the ones that this He'll says. match it. He'll match 100%. it. percent All right. So it's the taste. It's the tasting notes. It is nutty on the smell. It's kind of orangey. That's that you're going beyond. Wow, you're, you're right. going. You are stop. It's <laughs> you're being way too detailed. Tastes like whiskey. Let's press closer. Yeah. So what is? <laughs> what is? What is this? whiskey right and what do they do to it they toasted it yeah they toasted it this is toasty isn't it this does not say that it's <laughs> it toasty do- it doesn't zach try it it's just like dude it's it's better i feel like than other basil I, I know what the notes are and i can't find them oh <laughs> <laughs> what it's like so weird Look, but one of them is definitely on here and it's it's not a flavor is it toasty no 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 I wish. I wish this tasted toasty. This doesn't taste no. toasty at all. No. Um, it's um it's the mouthfeel. So what is it? What kind of mouthfeel is it? I forgot what the mouthfeel said. Would you say it's heavy? Or would you say it's No, it's light. Yeah, it's a light mouthfeel. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> That's Don't patronize me. No, I'm patronizing <laughs> them. That's one of the tasting notes. It is light mouthfeel. It is some of the worst taste not, not it's not the worst because it's accurate, but it's something lazy. I don't even know. It's, I'm it's, not sure what to say about it. It's lazy mm. advertising yep. for Here, their here's product. Another one. Okay, so it, they have one tasting note for the finish in particular. So let's see if we can get that. <laughs> did you read that? <laughs> this one is. I thought I did. I thought I only saw like three, maybe. You, you know, there's there's three for the tasting notes and one for the finish. Um, and it is. It is more detailed. It is a thing that you could like say like, oh, this tastes like blank. Tastes like vanilla. That was one of the I'm regular amazed. notes. Yeah, yeah. So you got vanilla out, out of that. Because I don't. I mean, gets a little. It's a little vanilla. Mm-hmm. I thought this was gonna be more noticeable, and I wouldn't actually have to try the ten year yeah. basil Aidens. Yeah. But now at this point, I'm like. We might have to try the basil Hayden's uh-huh. I, just, I, I don't, don't even... like this. It's okay. It's not bad. It's fine. Like, if it was given to me, I'd drink it, but I would... How much would you buy this bottle for? 40 bucks. You would? You'd spend $40 for on it. For real? Actually. Oh, I just knowing Basil Hayden's, that's how much it probably is going to be. No, no, be. no. How much would you buy? If you bought this, you had to pay for this bottle. What would it need to be? Yeah. 30 or really? less? Wow, this is a big spender here. I, I would just kind you, of... You're 30? Well... I am not nowhere higher than nineteen ninety nine. I wouldn't spend more than twenty dollars. Yeah, I wouldn't spend, but I could also. I, I would imagine that it would probably be thirty dollars. It should uh-huh. be thirty dollars. Yeah. I wouldn't spend thirty dollars. And that was what sixty. This was fifty five dollars. <sighs> that's close enough. Oh, that's no. a little. That's rough. Yeah. Come on, Basil Hayden. Come on, you can do. You can do this better. But the whole Basil Hayden's thing is it's an entry level, yeah, premium thing. But it, they're terrible. Yeah. So you guys didn't guess the, the finish yet. Got to do it. None? 
<laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? If Buttery. This, if this said, we'll get him next time. We'll we, get, we promise the next one's going to happen. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. We'll get one next time. The finish um, is... Buttery. No. No. It's, hot cloves. No. It's more generic. Um, what does every bourbon have? Oak. Okay. What a, <laughs> yes, but oak. no. What's another one? Oak. Uh, wood. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Wood. Wood. I, I forgot. It's caramel. Oh no! Yeah, it's not I mean, caramel. Not, that's I know. That's what it says. Though. I know. <laughs> Dark oak tannins. Honestly, you know what it's like. It's like somebody got the Woodford Reserve double oak, and then wrote down the flavor notes onto that bottle mm-hmm. without actually trying that. Trying this, yeah. yeah. This um, is not. If if you think, if you're looking to try this, compare this to Woodford Reserve. It's not. Just don't. It's not the double barrel. Actually, is the, is the, wait a minute. Is the Woodford toasted, or no, am I, I am I high? So I thought it was it's just double, double it's wood. Just double. I wood. thought it was toasted. I've never looked it up. Now I have to look it up because now I'm paranoid. Uh, I think there's another new bottle. I I did see your Woodford. I would say we should either compare the Woodford Double Oak or the Basil Hayden Ten to this. Do we have that? We have the ten. And we have a Woodford Double Oak. Um, let, me, let me look up um, the double oak. It's not offensive, but it's not good. It's not. We talked about uh, Old Granddad last episode. Yeah. This is way better. Why wouldn't you just... Th- yeah. Any of the Old Granddad. So, I would give this... <laughs> For... Uh, a portion of the price. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of a score, a number, and like I'm I'm having a hard time justifying like a three. I know. So I'm gonna say it's like a two and a half. So it, yes, it's, Woodford Woodford um, Double Oak, the second barrel finishing is it toasted. Is toasted. Okay. Yes. Good. So this would be the same premise. Mm-hmm. This is nothing like that. Like yeah. that. Woodford Double Oak is just. So I think we should try the ten personally. Okay. If you know we're gonna. Yeah. Yeah. Of, the, of the two, mainly just because I know the Woodford double I would agree, oak is going to be dope. But I like the double oak. Yeah, we yeah. all like the double oak. That's the thing, though. Yeah. Let's just do the 10. I mean, the Elijah Craig toasted was more caramely than the regular Elijah yeah. Craig. This is this is just disappointing. That's very disappointing. Unfortunately, I feel like a lot of their product is disappointing, which I don't want to say because I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. Somebody gave this an 89 on the, that app. Really? Yeah. All right, where is it? Uh, Zach? Mm-hmm. Oh. oh. I think it's in the in the. I didn't carrier. know this. So, um... Basil Hayden Toasted is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey made with brown rice instead of rye in its mash bill. Additionally, the bourbon is made using a toasted barrel to finish its uh, maturation, maturation process. Really? Maybe that's why it's got such a weird flavor to it. Here's the tasty notes from this. The nose and palates are interesting study, steady in seasonal contrasts. Uh, spring-like aromas of sweet herbs, green apple, orange, and lemon zest appear on the nose. The palate has much richer and more autumn or uh, autumnal, with flavors of roasted kettle corn, toffee, canned apples, and um, a generous swath of maple syrup coating the tongue. A big wallop of cinnamon, cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, and a hint of rosemary add to a slightly hot, toasty finish. It's definitely has personality for 40% ABV whiskey. Which, I mean... No. 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 I get... It I, has none of that complexity. It doesn't have the complexity, but it had orange. Yes, I, I'll grant that. Other than that? But a big wallop of cinnamon? Yeah, no. It does not... I don't know. Maybe maybe he's adding flavors to it. Like I'm just I'm 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 doing like a sleight of hand thing where I'm like psh, dash of bitters, yeah, a wall of cinnamon. <laughs> Throw I, it in psh, there. I would rather it. I would rather 
spend my own money and drink one for one of two reasons it's cheaper but also i think it's on par if not the same as this basil hayden's that um Whatever that whiskey was that won the thirty dollars challenge that Zach hates. Oh, the Earl, Earl Settler. Settler. I would rather drink the Earl Settler. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he tried some when he got here. He's like, it's "Good, it's pretty good." Okay, I got, well, I, I gotta try yours because unless you, you unless you're pretty certain that that tastes like. I think mine. it tastes the same. But okay. Yeah. yeah, I didn't. I did not like it. But back on track. This sorry. This but basil Hayden also toasted. Been open longer. Sure. Yeah. But I don't this, know. this basil Hayden toasted is a waste. No. I just. It's a waste of glass. Unless it mean, no, no. It's not. It's. It's not poured down the sink worthy. No. It's just you're gonna try. Oh, once. it's never. It's uh, yeah. It's almost never. Yeah. yeah. Granted, I've had one whiskey that I I literally poured down the sink because I didn't. I just I just didn't want it in my room anymore. So sorry, but smell this thing and just tell me. It's a lot more uh, prevalent. Why? Well, yeah, I just mean it, it's. It has more smell. It smells more. Floral to it's me. More alcoholy. So there's a twenty dollar oh. difference in this hypothetically. This is a seventy dollar bottle. That's fifty five. Maybe not twenty, but mm-hmm. just makes me sad. This one smells like caramel. This, I, I can see that. Slight. Would you say caramel corn? Mm-hmm. This is more personality. Caramel straight up. Mm-hmm. Way sweeter. This is way way sweeter. This, this has a. a there's more Ooh. character on this. Yeah. Definitely sweeter. A little bit of mint. I get the caramel. I get some caramel mint, some mint. Because it's like chilling almost because of the, the spice level. I wish I was better at describing things because I've got Sorry, a lot going on. Mm-hmm. A little, look, this is creamy too. It's a little ice creamy, you know, because I think it's probably because of the vanilla and the oiliness. Yeah, it's like a really nice, sweet cream, like mm-hmm. just straight up vanilla ice cream, but it's just, you know, the su- just so sweet, mm-hmm. which happens to be my favorite. Yeah, this just is so much better. Yeah. So much better. Which is kind of surprising because like it's, twi- it's twice as good. Like it's- this, this is a f- at least a full full points yeah it, this is like a four for me out of ten yeah. which is still not amazing but you know that's pretty good it's all right this i would be fine with drinking that i would not be no that that is lacking that's very disappointing what could you put this in to make it i think you could mix better. it in a lot of cocktails um, I, I know what you could put it in Woodford Double Oak. You think that would just make it... I think that would improve the Basil Hayden's. Fix it a lot, yeah. Like, you pour about 80% Woodford <laughs> Double Oak, yeah. and then 20% that. Yeah. Okay. Well, what about... Over the ex- course of multiple bottles of Woodford. <laughs> what about... Over five bottles of Woodford, yeah. you will have gone through the yeah. one. It'll increase your volume in the quantity you have of the Woodford. Mm-hmm. What about in a cocktail in situation, no. though? No. Would you never Just even no. use it in a cocktail? Well, it's not strong enough for a good old fashioned. It's not strong enough for ice. Yeah. So you could you could just do. Um, I I would just chill it and drink just it. Chill it. You could almost, almost just put coke in it. But you can't, yeah. But you can't put ice in it though. Yeah. It has to be already coke. cold. It's gotta be like a it's cold. Be, no, mug. I feel like what if, if you're doing if you're putting coke in it. If then, you're doing yeah. a whiskey then coke, yeah. it it already takes away all of the whiskey flavor anyways. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. I respect people that like this. I just, it's... It's not for us. The only thing, I, why are they so expensive? Yeah. Yeah, honestly. If they were to bring the price down... But to what? They already have good, better... Like we, we just said old Grand Grand We haven't Grand had is, any of the Jim Beam lines, but yeah. I know that the Jim Beam... We need to have the Jim Beam lines so we just can prove this, but yeah. the Jim Beam lines, you got the... There's double... Uh, like the double wood Jim Beam, uh, the black, you know, there's why, why wouldn't you just be buying that? Mm-hmm. Or the Knob Creek, yeah, 50. Yeah, it's good. This, yeah, this is way worse than Knob Creek. This is not even close to Knob Creek. No, the only thing is because of the, the percentage, somebody wants a lower percentage, and I can understand that, but I to that, I would say get just a regular Jim Beam, mm-hmm. then 
Yeah. Or even Jack. I, I would like to, I'd I'd love to know what the regular Jack Daniels tastes compared to this. Yeah. What well, has more body. But yeah. All right. I was hoping I knew there was a chance going in, and that's why I bought it, that this was probably gonna be disappointing because I'm less disappointed on the ten and I was extremely disappointed on that. Mm-hmm. I am Super disappointed on this toasted. Right. It has no noticeable change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Maybe we just so don't besides, like toasted well, barrels. Look, we just said we, the, the Woodford double oat is finished in a toast. The second yeah. oak is toasted. We yeah, like but that. it's finished in the toasted. So is this. Oh, yeah. okay, guys. So, like, there's one. There's ones working whiskeys, basically, that work for us that are toasted. And why, why can't this be the same? It's, I think yeah, I think it's mostly just because of the proof. I think yeah, that's the first I, step. That's I the don't first know. step to make this better. It, you couldn't add much more flavor to this without adding the proof anyway. But if you just added proof and kept the same flavors, it'd be that'd be the best thing you could do for this thing. It could be interesting. Yeah, to me, it has even less sweeter notes than the Elijah Craig toast it had. Yeah, it does. It most definitely and that's what I was does. looking for. Yeah. I was looking for you know the, the toffee caramel, the marshmallow, because even we didn't like the Elijah Craig, but even that still had hints and nods towards those yeah. flavors. This even has it was none of them. Yeah. yeah, it was not yeah. there. All right. Let's quit being sad and be glad. Well, Do we rate this? Three. I don't know. Two and a half. This okay. is, oh, oh, the, the, um, uh, the ten? ten? The, two, the, the ten, ten. The ten was uh, a four. Wait, me. did I do this? Uh, this is... I'll give this a 3.2. 3.2. I'll give it a three and a half. I'll, I'll give it a four. I thought... It's okay. It's all right. Yeah, it's not bad. I'm excited for this next one because I actually haven't had any of their product, I don't think. Actually, I think I lowered I think I lowered the 10 more than I should have. I think it's actually like a 4.5. It's I, I, I like that, actually. It, it's just the money aspect that makes it terrible. I think that's the thing is that I'm thinking of like a monetary value to that... My, it's it's the, just hard for me to yeah. justify spending seventy dollars on something that's that. Right. Not, well, it's not interesting, especially since the regular Basil Hayden ten or the regular excuse me the regular Basil Hayden is approximately eight to nine years. Yeah. So. So you might as well buy that. Oh yeah. Same ah. proof, but that, but that to me is that proves that just shows how uninteresting that toast it is. And that's why it's worse. I think if you're gonna do a toasted yet, gotta do the toasted right. Gotta do it right. The best examples of second barrel aging that I've had is um, the 1910 and the Woodford Double Oak. And the Woodford Double Oak is amazing. Yeah, it is immaculate. That was one of the first whiskeys that I think mm-hmm. you guys got like we, showed. We probably me. all had, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, "Wow, this is this is amazing. This is a very good example of something that will get somebody into mm-hmm. whiskey." Yeah, because it's approachable, <clears throat> but it's also got a nice sweetness to it. It's and like it's, drinking a caramel creme brulee. Yeah, <laughs> it's very good. So, Dylan, tell us about Pinhook. Um, so Pinhook is a, in the world of bourbon, new company that I think came to be around 2010. And up until very recently, they've been sourcing, um, Indiana whiskey, formerly known as MGP. Now they, um, were bought out by Lexco and I changed the name officially, but I forget what. And so this is an Indiana bourbon. And what Pinhook does is they have ties, as Kentucky does, with horse racing. So each edition is named after a horse. And that kind of dictates the proof and mash bill. It's a very interesting color. (laughs) You guys know that this horse's name. I forget what this it. one is. Bourbon Country. Yeah. That's the name of the horse. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Uh, He's a black horse. It's so just, I think they all have like yearly editions and stuff too. So. Yeah. But maybe I'm just stupid. But what what is when the sex says it's C? What does that mean? Colt. Colt. So, okay. It's a boy. And a mare. Is that the other option? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is um, it says age three years or more. That's it's it. Young. Yep. Yeah, that's all. We, that's the only thing we got. No tasting notes. No nothing. I guess that explains the color. The, this is kind of just one that I've always wanted to try. This brand, Pinhook. Yeah. And so I, for some reason, recently I just chose to finally like just get it. And right? You just bought two we're of doing them. This. Just buy it. Yep. Well, I bought one, and then I started doing the research, and then I stumbled across the second one, which we'll mm-hmm. get to. Ooh. It's peppery. Mm. Lacking a, bo- a main body, you no. know, it's not very complex. It doesn't. It's like evolve it, in the mouth. Not, Sweet caramel. It's pretty yeah. yeah. Hits, hits your tongue. Pretty one dimensional. Nothing really, and then just also sweet. Yeah, it's also hard to get scents because I wanted to talk yeah. about the scents, but there's just not anything to say about it. No. It's just kind of it kind of it's generic. Bourbon-y. That's, that's a good word. Just generic bourbon. Which it's like you know. I'd hope by but, now everybody knows what generic bourbon yeah, but this, smells like. Oh, man. Not to keep dogging on Basil Hayden, but this is still better than that. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, just, no, it is. Wow. And this is about $35. Yeah. Oh, it's only $35? Yeah, the, the regular pinhooks are pretty cheap. I thought the pinhooks were a little bit more expensive than that for this. No, not That's really. reasonable. I bought this in uh, the Colburns, and it was 35 Really? Yep. I, I actually enjoy this. They do have cast strength versions. I don't know if it's mostly a Kentucky thing because I have not seen one yet, mm-hmm. but they yeah. do have those. I think I might have seen, because I know I've seen a couple selects of Pinhook. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure. I think it was at my local Total Wine, but I can't remember exactly when I saw them or. Because I just didn't know very much about it, so I knew I wasn't going to mm-hmm. buy it. So. Yeah, it's, it's got a good brown sugar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of molasses Yeah. You can, you can roll this on your tongue for a while, and it keeps... And this is 47.7. 40, yeah, 47.7. Okay. So it's not flat, yeah. No, it's, it's dece. This is very dece. Yeah, so I like this it. This is a pretty good buy for 35 Honestly, it's all I, right. I really enjoy this, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just too... It's too one-dimensional. It could use a little more oak, a little more time, you know? Mm-hmm. It's pretty young. It could use more body, but it doesn't need it, honestly, because it's still good. No. It is fine. It, it doesn't. It, it's it's on the level uh, that I would put as, like, a, like a Woodford regular mm-hmm. or, like, a Maker's or, you know, it's like so those qualities, not necessarily those flavors, but like those, you know, daily sippers, the affordables, they're not dramatic, you know, but they're not simple mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. So that, yeah. this is where it, this kind of lines up for me. Yeah. So. Yeah, this could be a daily sipper. Definitely good. You know, I'm going to give it only a, f- a four and a half just because... I really think this could be a lot better if they just did a couple of things. I'd know. be interested to see. I agree. Mm-hmm. But I'd be interested to see if they had anything that was either cask strength or like a select, like a barrel select or something like that, just to see if that could kind of s- tweak those flavors just a yeah. little bit, kind of bump them up. Yeah, this is a good mixing whiskey this would really make your drinks taste good yeah because i think you're not losing any of it by putting into something else unless of course the other ingredient in your drink is something super overpowering but when this is the compliment it already kind of tastes complimentary it doesn't have a super powerful flavor it no. just kind of because when i when you have an old-fashioned all you're getting from it and not it's not all but most often what you're getting from that bourbon is the oak the caramel, some and some spice, you know, to you know, power through the the syrup and the bit and the bitters or the, a little fruit tanginess, you know, yeah. and together that makes a nice drink. It doesn't matter what bourbon you use, 
those are kind of the three flavors that are really going to push through. And if it's a good bourbon, it's going to you know add a little extra pizzazz. You know, or what, what's special about that one? Yeah. Um, this doesn't have all that. Spe- doesn't have really anything special in it, but it's got the core of a great mixing whiskey. I think better than like the Bowl and Bond stuff, you know, like Wild Turkey and Evan Williams. I don't know. That might be an experiment in the future. Mm-hmm. As far as the mixing. Yeah, the mixing. I, yeah. I do agree that this is a... Yeah. Uh, um, Excuse the barking if you can hear that. <laughs> it's my dog. Should we advance our pin hook powers? I say we do. I'm going to give it a 5.2. 5.2. Inter- that's pretty high. That is pretty th- high. That's pretty high. My thought is... I mean, it's an it's a opinion. But. Um, For to be daily, it has to be at least five. Sure. And you would daily this? I would daily it. Yeah. So. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. I like that. I liked that a lot. They should make a really old one, like a 15-year at some point. They name it Horse Glue. I should name it Sea Biscuit. <laughs> what was the War Horse's name from that, uh, the movie War Horse? I don't know. Sea Biscuit. <laughs> I don't know. They sea should biscuit. name it Atreus from... God of War. No, what's the... What's the horse from uh, Never Ending Story? Oh, it, it is Atreus. It is Atreus. Yeah, it, it is Atreus. <laughs> Never As he's sinking in the mud, it's yeah. just like, no! Atreus, no! I hate Never... I hate that movie. You don't like that I movie? Hate, I hate those movies. The movie is... It, it, <laughs> the first one is good. I like the first one. I didn't know there was more than one. There's three of them. The second one is like some weird. It's like his sister. They're not good. His sister likes come comes with him that time, into like. I don't remember how like the story realm, and they have to like save this queen. Hell. Or something like that, and then. It's weird. We have to save the queen. So what do we got? Here. It's bourbon. <laughs> you guys want to guess what this horse's name is? I know what this horse's name is. Uh, <laughs> runny McRunny Horse. Nope. <laughs> That'd be a better name. Horsey McHorsey Face. No. It's uh, it's bourbon is the first name again. Bourbon bourbon. What was the what was the horse we were what just talking about? One? I don't remember. The name is Bourbon War. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh. This is the four-year age name. So that it's the, the youngest is four years old. There is some nine-year-old stuff in here. Okay. So this is um, their yearly release um, that they do. And I think this year we're actually at year six. So this is 2019. So yeah, that would that would actually translate. Um, so I found this actually last week, and I stumbled across it, and they had it. This was also about fifty five dollars. Oh, it smells nice. And this is forty nine percent and some change. But um, yeah, so this is part of their stock that they're aging up, essentially, and then yearly they do a release of it. Yeah, I think it smells nice. Actually, I mean, somehow it, I feel it smells younger than the other one we I, had. Really? I was, I was yeah. going to say it had more character, actually. No, it does. It does have more character, but it has that youthful grain smell that the other one didn't have. Huh. <sighs> it's Ooh, got, that was close. I almost burned it. I almost burned my nose out. <laughs> this is hotter. It's a little too easy to do it on these. <sighs> this is more cinnamon and... Oh, yeah. To- yeah, cinnamon yeah. for sure. Cinnamon sugar... Probably just because I've used this glass like five times now, but it's starting to smell a little dusty, dusty and musty. Okay. Yeah. 
drinking time. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. Ooh, a noticeable improvement. Just say it. It's, I mean, I think it's the the main difference is the proof. It is different, but the it's main only 2%. difference. It is. Yeah. Forty nine. But the other one was only forty. That was forty seven. You you said. Yeah, forty-seven point seven. So yeah, it's pretty. It's within, a little, within uh two point two point two five. It's definitely uh. It's, it's better. It's definitely, better. definitely, yeah. Whew. It's definitely a I bourbon. Like, oh. <laughs> it's definitely, it's definitely uh, um, toasty. Sweet. <laughs> I uh, I lost my my thought there, and mm. I just couldn't. So that one was never rated, actually, in the app I'm using. Mm-hmm. That the first one. The first one. It, the community gave it a three point five five mm-hmm. out of five, and this horse scored a three point five, but mm-hmm. the app gave it an eight. But did it? But did it win the Derby? It was made into glue. Hell. No, not bourbon war. Yeah, but only after uh, creating offspring yeah. to be made into more glue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's like, this is your life. You run, <laughs> I hit you with a stick, you make offspring, and then you die. You live to four mm. years old, and then you are now glue. Yeah, four to nine years old, 75 corn, 20.5 rye, 4.5 malted barley. That's pretty high on the rye. 25%. Yeah. I mean, that. yeah. Yeah, it's not terribly high, but. Yeah, similarly to the other one, not a whole lot to say. It's it's, it's better. It's got more. It's more it's sweet. sweet. It's yeah. more hot. It's more spicy. Yep. It just has more. I find it easier to drink. Easier, really? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's. I mean, I don't think it's easier to drink, but I think it's. I like it more. Maybe, yeah, because it's it's just easier to enjoy. Well, not even that. I just find it easier to. It's just. Like smoother. I find it smoother. You find it smoother. Yeah. So for, I find this sweeter. Yeah. Uh, yes, much sweeter. Yeah. I don't. I don't have a lot to say about this. Honestly, it doesn't. Uh-huh. Nothing's outstanding about either of these. Yeah, I don't. This this is one I could daily. The other one I don't think so, but this one okay. for sure. And that was how much? Fifty five. Same price. Fifty five for a daily. At, or, no, or twenty dollars more. Yeah, yeah. Same price as Basil Hayden. As Basil Hayden. That just proves how bad the yeah. Basil Hayden is. That's definitely better than a Basil Hayden's. Yeah, I would. I give it a five and a half. Five and a half. He's not too far off of me, actually. I'd probably just give this a five, I think. I, I would give this a high five, five, five. five point eight, mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause it's, it's sim- it, it, it's, it's like 80% the same as that other one. Yeah. But I do like it. I love, aesthetically, I love it. I love yep. the color on it. That bronze gold. Yep. But, um, yeah, so I would love to find this year's version. That's 2019, so there's two years that we're looking be looking for. But um, keep an eye out for it then. Yeah, and the designs are different too. So that one's got like a you know triangle kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, some of them are swirls, and yeah. some of them's like a different. Design. Yeah, yeah this one's got like a upside down chevron kind of yeah. thing, ah. and then the other one's got like a just a logo with a horse oh, head. Yeah, in it. but specifically that like those have different. The yearly releases, yeah, those are different. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, so I see. It says they release a yearly bourbon and a yearly rye, so I think the rye is one to look out for. It could be, yeah. Um, that that's got potential. I think it'll probably be like seventy bucks, but could be good. Could be good. Yep, because this is pretty good. No. Shall we get to the? Uh, are we are we doing that? Are we knocking on it? Are we getting knock on it? I don't know. Do I'm kind of I'm kind of toasted. Barreled. Barreled. 
I'll do it, but sure. I think I think we need the grand finale. Okay. All it. right. We're going to hark it back to the... Zach's going to be knock, knock, knocking on... On someone's door. My pillow's door. <laughs> hey, that's me. <laughs> that was Isabel. You want to drink some... Bourbon? Some whiskey? Ooh. <laughs> nope, Dylan's asleep. Yeah, I gotta go home after this. Yes, you do. You both can get out of my house. I can. I got guests, new ones. Who are you people? The last three have all been pretty much the same whiskey. They're all just MGPs. He. Oh, I forgot Heaven's Door. Is. This is this one's an MGP. MGP as well. Unfortunate. This is from Mr. Dylan himself. Hey, Zank. This one's hot, guys. Ooh. Oh, hotter. Was it 110? 116. Whoa. Yep. I've never seen a cast strength version of this. Where, so wait, where'd you find this? I made it. You made it. Wow. He took the bourbon. Wow. Bob, Bob Dylan himself descended from high V. <laughs> he's like he's like wow he's like zippity zoo zip 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 and I'm like what and then I open up my phone translate and it says hey this is my whiskey try my whiskey <laughs> hey Mr. Bourbon man play pour a drink for me it's so terrible <laughs> <laughs> all of it is terrible uh, so this yeah this is the cast strength um, single barrel select of Heaven's Door Specifically, this is Indiana juice. So I know they do a Tennessee one and a bourbon one. Uh, the Tennessee one is probably Dickel, I would imagine. But um, this is the first one I've actually owned. It doesn't smell horrible. It's this. So it's pretty much Eleanor. Yeah. So it's got to smell similar to the last the pin hook we had oh, just, just before this. But and, yeah, it's all Indiana yeah. MGP. Watch it be better because it's the same whiskey, but higher proof. Just higher proof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah, mean, I, it's... I can't smell anything though, like at all. It just smells generic. Ma maybe I did burn my nose up. I I literally can't smell discerning qualities on this. You know, I I I'm not good at smelling bourbons. They all kind of just smell the same. Yeah, it's just dusty. <laughs> the card looks like. <laughs> That tastes a lot like corn. It's yeah. a lot of corn. It's hot corn. I, I like it, though. It's, I like it because it's not overly sweet. Yeah. It's got a nice sourness. No, nice tart. It's so dry. Sourness. Though. Yeah, it's very dry. Very dry. I'm very thirsty after. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. For more. But it's a high, <laughs> it's a high V pick. <laughs> so. I, I've never seen... I had never seen a uh, cast Trank single barrel, so... That mm -hmm. is why I bought it, and it was uh, sixty-five dollars. So that's pretty good for a cast strength single barrel. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's and what I thought. And it was MGP, so yeah. I'm like, how how bad is it going to be? Yeah, uh, I know what it's going to probably taste yeah. like. It's it, yeah, it's not going to be terrible. Yep. Unlike Basil Hayden's toasted poopy, um, I get a little bit. I mean, it's predominantly vanilla caramel, and that's about it. That's all I can really say. Because I'm not getting spices. I'm not getting pepper. I'm not getting uh, a little cream, but not a whole there lot. Maybe a slight bit of cinnamon. Yeah. I, really? No, he's... It, I, mm, yeah. It's so subtle. I, I don't... I can't do it. I can't find cinnamon. Really? No. Because it's just, I mean, to me right now, it's just hot. It's just heat causing that spice. It's not its not a cinnamon spice. It's a fire spice. I, I do get the cinnamon, but yeah. No, I, it's, it is hot. And I love hot things. But I mean, this drink's way hotter than like 
A lot of Elijah Craig's. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we so we we just had last episode the old granddad 114 followed by Estella 115. This is 116. Yeah. This, this is, is this tastes way hotter than either oh, of those. Yeah. Most definitely. Which is kind of fun, you know that this product is hitting above its weight class, but unnecessary. Yeah. It's a shame that... Hey, yeah. Mr. Sin! Yeah, it's a, we're, and... we're pretty much at the conclusion of an episode, and really the, the past four whiskeys have been very, very similar. Yeah. Not much to say discerning no. each one of them, except for their proven age. So... Bob Dylan made the logo. Yeah, my Take, God. Yeah. Takeaways? Takeaways? Oh, MGP is good. Yep. Basil Hayden's... Not good. Poopy. Avoid it, like the plague. Um, Unless not, you like it. Yeah, and then don't listen to us if <laughs> then, you do. And just buy the regular yeah. one, please. Oh, yeah, and Irish whiskey, Keeper's Heart. Uh, not too bad. Not not bad at all. Yeah. Looking forward not to that. Bad. Waterford. Yeah. That was pretty meh. It was pretty meh. I, I think what Waterford is doing is the right thing. The details. Yes. And the cool bottles. They're adding lo- even more luxury back to the bourbon market. They're just the, not... I, I had really hoped it was going to be... I, I guess I don't really don't know what it was going to be. I knew it was not going to be the same as, like, a, um, Red Breast, but mm-hmm. in my heart, I was kind of hoping for it. Yeah, it'd be, yeah. But that's not a... That's not the case. Nope, yep. it is not, so... Well, thank you for listening, everyone. Hopefully next time we'll have more interesting comments, more interesting whiskeys, more prevalent... Uh, tasting notes but we hope you enjoyed this episode nonetheless so if you do please continue listening to us give us some recommendations on our Spotify account on our uh, email Uh, Dylan likes to throw in a couple polls every now and then reply to them let us know what you want to hear what you want to have us taste we love recommendations send us pappies so we can send us pappies so we can fulfill that that (laughs) Pappies. Yep. I have stage four terminal cancer, and my make a wish is for pappies. pappies. Ha! I don't have cancer. Anymore. <laughs> now that I have pappies. <laughs> and it's been granted. Thank you, everyone. Bye.